for Criminal Media's Policy, I'm Tabi Madiba, Distinguished Professor of Education at Stellenbosch University and President of the Academy of Science of South Africa, Jonathan Johnson, joins me to unpack his book titled Corrupted, a study of chronic dysfunction in South African universities. Your book explores the root causes of chronic instability in a sample of South African universities. So briefly talk to us more on why some universities seem to be in a constant state of dysfunction. Thank you. So the, the first and, and perhaps obvious reason is history. So a lot of these universities, particularly the older ones like the University of Fort Hare have a long history of being undermined, underfunded, by successive governments, whether it was the, you know, the early uh, colonial government, the apartheid government, the Siskai government, all of these entities uh, really sabotaged what started off uh, a century ago as a really good liberal arts kind of university college. And over time, uh, the consequences of basically government interference and government misdirection has uh, uh, undermined Forty years' ability to stand strong today as a, a top university. Secondly, uh, history doesn't explain everything because there are universities that have overcome uh, problems of dysfunction, places mm -hmm. like the University of Venda, the University of Limpopo, and the University of the Western Cape, which uh, I mentioned in the book. Because there's a second factor that keeps these universities in chronic dysfunction, and that is uh, the people that run these universities. You know, so unlike some of my colleagues on the hard left, I don't believe you simply say, oh, history has brought us to this point. You also have to say, what did we do as agents? You know, where does African agency come into this uh, with respect to, and we've mismanaged our universities. We have corrupted our universities. We have undermined the rule of law, uh, both in the governance of institutions, the councils, the academic center of the university, the senate, and in the way we treat students. And so it's both a function, the chronic dysfunction, uh, broadly a consequence of the past, but also our actions in the present. Professor Johnson, talk to us about whether the problem of dysfunction in universities is because of capacity or integrity. It's both. It's both that we often lack, uh, you know, uh, because of the people we appoint, like in the government that we have today. If you're going to appoint you know, cadres, comrades, lo patriots, loyalists, you know, you're not necessarily appointing the people with the skills to be able to manage, whether it's a complex parastatal or for that matter, a modern university. So in that sense, capability or capacity is, is part of the reason for dysfunction. But there's also something called the integrity, the value system of the university. If a university is constantly being looted from the top down, you know, then what it means is you're eroding a value system. Because remember, in a university, the value system isn't business. The, you know, that's the corporate sector. The value system is academics, teaching, learning, research, public service, the things that make a university distinct from other public entities. And the more you lose what I call in the book the academic focus, the more you undermine uh, the ability of that university to function properly. And from your personal experience as having been a department chair, a dean, acting vice chancellor, a vice chancellor and an administrator, can you tell us how institutional inequalities were deepened by chronic instability in the less well endowed institutions? Well, the, uh, as you can imagine, the more time you spend trying to just keep the vultures out, the more time you spend writing elaborate rules, the more time you spend in court fighting corrupt uh, or the CCMA fighting corrupt, the less time you have from a university management point of view in you know, designing innovative curricula, uh, in doing staff development, in building strong international partnerships, the kinds of things that make universities good or not so good. And so one of the big consequences of chronic dysfunction is that you can't attend to what we like to call the academic project because your hands are so full 
just trying to manage all the political operators on your campus, in your council, on your senate, in the admin of the university, and that becomes a fairly full-time job. And talking about the academic project, Professor Janssen, can you tell us how the academic project becomes marginalized in dysfunctional universities as the criminalization of institution takes center stage in the business of higher education? Yeah, as I said, it drops off the agenda. So one of the things that you, you know, you can do is look at the agenda of a council of a functional university and the agenda of a council of a dysfunctional. In a dysfunctional university, the council often meets four, not four times, which is minimum uh, and ideal, but six, seven, eight, 10, 20 times a year, you know, just trying to manage one crisis after the next. And so the things that appear on the agenda is not uh, things like, how does ChatGPT uh, you know, affect the ability of a university to do assessment with integrity. That's a big issue today. You won't find that on the agenda of a dysfunctional university because it is simply trying to manage either a, a an incompetent vice chancellor or a rogue council chair or something like that. Those are examples I actually use in the book. So again, it is the distraction that comes with dysfunction that disables attention to the academic project. And how do macro-political factors shape and influence the micro-politics of what happens inside the institutions? So micro-politics plays itself out through a range of actors uh, within it. So in a modern university, who are those actors? Those actors are students who may be captured by their political parties that they represent on the inside. Those could be union members who are corrupt and tied to, like you see at Zabak Mahato, like you see at UNISA at the moment, who are tied to gangs of uh, people who are trying to loot the resources of the university, members of councils who are there on behalf of other people, not on behalf of themselves. Uh, for example, as you saw in municipalities or municipal representation of council. And then the staff themselves, staff that work in the registrar's office, you know, dishing out diplomas that people didn't earn as a University of Zululand and that kind of thing. So the micropolitics is really uh, plays itself out through all of these people that are supposed to work in the best interest of the university, but are in fact, see the, the university not as a place of higher learning, but as a place no different from a parastatal like SAA or ESCOM or, you know, I go there to steal the resources that are available, not to learn. And can you tell us more on how political economy has been inattentive to the relationship between politics and resources in corrupt and dysfunctional institutions? Yeah, so the book uh, uses an approach that I call political economy, which in a very simple sense means the relationship between money and power, right? Or between politics and the resources. And this is a sort of a standard approach to doing serious critical work in the study of things, entities like universities or anything else. It recognizes that you're not just talking about resources, you're talking about power. It recognizes that you're not just talking about power, you're talking about money. And so the way in which I have used that concept in the social sciences is to draw attention to the fact that those two things are very intimately linked in the way universities find themselves a, a, a subject to, to political actors uh, with their eye on the resource. And remember, a university in South Africa these days often has a budget north of of a billion rands. And so people see that kind of money as something to be stolen rather than used to advance the academic project. And lastly, Professor Janssen, what are you hoping people take away after reading your book? Well, I'm hoping that people will understand that universities are not exceptional. That is, you know, a lot of us traditional academics, a lot of people, parents, you know, the public, they look to universities to be better than ESCOM, to be better than Bosasa, to be better than all of these looted public entities. And I'm hoping people will see that universities are subject to the same kinds of corrupt forces 
as anyone else in our country. And that if we are going to retain some of the best universities on the continent of Africa and indeed in the world, it is important to turn off the taps of corruption. That was Jonathan Johnson speaking to Krima Media's Polity about Corrupted, a study of chronic dysfunction in South African universities.